There you go. There's your entry. And we're up to 138. <laughs> okay. So good evening, everyone. It is Friday, 8 p.m. We are going to uh, to put all of this in 30 minutes because I am dead dog exhausted from doing affidavits and um, and meetings. And I, I wish I could drink, Stephen. I am so exhausted. I can't even drink a margarita. I'm still drinking coffee. <laughs> In a Volkswagen mug? It is. Is that what that is? Oh, my. You know, because I have a Volkswagen bus. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, yes, absolutely. So this has been a crazy week. To tell you I am exhausted is an understatement, both with, I mean, you can see the bags under my eyes. Um, This has been the probably the craziest week in a long time. Um, when we win this thing, I will miss my Friday night meetings. You know, Kathleen, my other retiree group from FDNY EMS, when co- we usually we would usually have a meeting once a quarter, you know, it was no big deal. When COVID started, I started realizing that people were having a problem and, uh, you know, it, it was a lot of mental health issues because people were now isolated and scared and so we started uh, doing doing the our meetings was like once a week, and then it was twice a week, um, and then like on holidays because everyone was stuck in their houses and there was no getting together with families. I would literally like Zoom like an eight hour or ten hour day. Uh, I would have do Thanksgiving and just just do something like, you know, I would be painting or we would do tie dyes all day or uh, I was putting up Christmas decorations and. People would just pop in and out. It was literally, I said, it's like cheers, just come and go. And that's what we did, you know? So yeah, you can still do chats once a month. I'll be open to chatting. Me too, Michelle. (laughs) Because uh, I don't know if I ever really want to go back out in public again with all the crazy that there is. But so, so I just want you to know that I know you think we're nuts, you know, with doing some of these um, homework assignments, but I'm telling you, they're having an impact. (laughs) Um, And so you've been following on our page. You saw my little video shorts. You realize something's going on. Um, and, And then someone decided, one of the council persons thought that they would be slick and pull an ugly move. And that really didn't work too well with us either. That'll have repercussions later, but Um, thanks guys. I I'm feeling, well, last week was my treatment, but then this week I'm just tired. It's just, uh, we're just, we're burning it at both ends. So we're, we're exhausted. And, and many of you have, have been dropping your affidavits into our email box. And that's what we've been working on is like day and night, plus everything that the lawyers need for the litigation. So I want you to please, uh, please keep up with the homework is that, we need you to do those affidavits. If we sent you it out an email or if in the by chance you did not get a request for an email and you feel that you have something compelling to tell us that you are going to severely have issues with the prescription drug plan that they want to put you in um, in comparison to costs and what they are today. We need to know that, especially the prescription drug issue. So that that there is huge. Um, Tommy Hogan says, I have a meeting scheduled at council member Linda Lee on May 18th. Should, yes, you should. Tommy, are you going alone to Linda's meeting or are you going as part of a group? And are, are let me know because, um, if it's a zoom call or it's in person, I need to know that if it's by zoom, we can actually come with you. If it's not by zoom, I can't, if it's hybrid, let's say you're going to be there and you want to zoom with us, we can, we can get them to, to do a zoom with us and we can help participate. So, um, you keep, let me know on that one. Um, is there any news from Tuesday's copay hearing? No, Janet, there's not. We don't do not have a reply to that. So if no, if if some of you are unfamiliar, there was a copay uh, preliminary injunction appeal hearing at the first department appellate court. 
Uh, you can actually see it up online. Um, the link was posted on our Facebook page. And I apologize. I actually did have to, I was struggling to stream it that day. The problem was, was stupid Facebook AI. I posted that, you know, click the link here to watch Jake uh, in his oral argument on the copay. And, and, and Facebook kept dropping my feed, telling me that I was posting sexual content because I used the word oral. <laughs> and I kept looking at Michelle because Michelle and I were on the stream and I was live feeding it. And then Facebook kept sending me a nasty gram that I was doing something bad. And I'm like, I'm dressed. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not making any weird hand gestures. I just don't understand this, but... Yes. So I guess the word now has to be verbal. Yes. But it is called an oral argument. I know. <laughs> so I don't know what to tell you. But for those of you that kept seeing me come on and within five minutes be bounced off, that is why. <laughs> so first, first they did this when we had the last argument. I think I, we were mimicking the, the comments that the judge made by saying gobbledygook. And they said I was using profanity, um, racial, racial profanity was the word gobbledygook. And then this one is oral. I, I, I can't make this up. I, I, I just, I can't, I just can't. So at least we got a good laugh, laugh out of it. Um, Ellen says, how would I know the price? I almost had a heart attack, had, had a heart attack when I saw the price of these lawyers. Um, I don't know how you what the price of the attorneys for the city, so or, or emblem. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what what that's about. But uh, let's see. So the senators and congresspersons, we are actually rolling out that. Oh, that's another homework assignment I have to do this weekend because I met with the Delaware retirees today. We drafted it and it's ready to go out. It'll go out as an Action Network link. I will get that up this weekend. Um, so we always knew someone's asking how, how do the lawyers think that the hearing went? So we always knew that we had a, a chance. I mean, there's always a risk that you lose the preliminary injunction. You could win the preliminary injunction and lose the case. You could, you know, win the preliminary injunction and win the case. You could lose the preliminary injunction, lose the case, lose the preliminary injunction and win the case. So they always told us, don't worry, even if you do lose it, you still have a 50, 50 chance of winning the case. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but I still think that they they do believe we have a decent case because of there were three prongs for that preliminary injunction. We had two very strong and one they felt was not so strong, but it could be strong at a later date. And I think that's what the lawyer, the judge was implicating um, in his decision. So we'll see how it goes. Um, thank you, Joan. Tommy, Zoom by myself, but would love company. So I'll tell you what, um, Tommy, if you want to invite me in, I would love to be in that with you. So um, you've got enough time between now and the 18th to see if you can do that. And I can see if I can uh, get myself and even our government liaison to, to come with you, um, or at least just myself. It could just be you and me. It just just the two of us. <laughs> Oh, like our entry music. <laughs> um, no, Lainey, there was not a decision. So in the meantime, if um, going back to the affidavits, if you do have affidavits that do need to get in, please very quickly get those back to us. We need to review them and and uh, and get that get that in. Great, Tommy, it's a date. Woo for me. Okay. Um, Laura, can we still email the Action Network even though Charles Barron and Ari Kagan um at eat with even with Chuck? Um Laura, let me don't do any of the action networks like over the weekend. Well, I'm gonna tell you, let me go in and look and see what's in there because I don't think their names are I don't think their names were in there because they were supporting us. They were like probably the two the two that are supporting what we're doing. Um, but I think we're fine with that. Um, 
I would say keep doing the action network so I can always go in and tweet the the who's who's getting them. Are we are we going to hear anything before September first? Uh, George, I absolutely hope so. That case, our case should be filed in a couple weeks. Uh, absolutely. And call my council person at nine o'clock. Will will the council introduce the bill? Men will do nothing. Menon will do nothing. That's because Menon's useless. She's just worried about her and not pissing off the unions because she's kissing their behinds. But you just keep, listen, it's like I always say, you know, if if we hope to God we win this thing, right? But if we don't, um, I'm going to go down knowing that we gave it our best fight and and we annoyed a few people along the way. <laughs> I think we just leave our mark and our impression. They know we're strong, and I don't think they like that. I don't care, you know. They are they're they're just too busy making sure that they're appealing to people that are you know kissing their butts. Uh, they work for the for for their constituents. When Menon puts in an email that she's not meet, meeting with people in her district, her own constituents, that should be resonating throughout her entire district. That she's re refusing to meet with constituents because she doesn't want to hear what they have to say, and that should tell whoever is her opponent if she has one, um, what she's doing, and if she doesn't have one, she should get one. You know, someone should go, you know what? You don't belong here if you're not going to listen to your own constituents come to you as a group. So, Anne, uh, I, if that's if that's what you're saying, I know it's going to upset you that she doesn't want to hear from you. Call anyway. And then when you when you hang up, do that like evil laugh, just so you know, like, <laughs> just make yourself feel good. That's what I do. <laughs> you got to get some fun out of it, girl. Don't take everything so seriously. I need help filling it out. I have no idea what to do. The young lady that was helping me said she would help me, but she muted me while she was helping somebody else. And then when she was finished with them, she kept calling my name. I couldn't hear. Uh, she, I couldn't hear me answering her. So she just connected us to me and I never knew, learned how to do it. Okay. Barbara, can you private message me uh, in Facebook your phone number and um, or at least your private message me your email address. And then tomorrow after I wake up, I will find time to message you, to email you, to see when we can, if we could do this like over, over breakfast, maybe like at nine, <laughs> maybe you and I could zoom together. I could show you how to do it and you could do your, yours then. If that sounds good, if not, let me know what time is good for you. Give me your email address and I will send you an email link to zoom. Okay. Um, did anyone determine who was behind the insurance ads? Yes, that was an insurance agent in Melville. Um, um, yes, absolutely. Um, yes, Vicky Palladino does support us. And Vicky's actually in our Facebook page. So uh, I think there's like two or three council persons that support us in our page. How much does 12-126 help us for our court hearing? It does help us a lot, actually, but um, we're getting there. Maybe we have to get support of all the opponents. That would be good too. <laughs> then I would need a whole nother political action team. Ellen, you have been great on the recent radio shows. How about if one of them asked the public advocate appear, but also had you call as a call in? Ellen, why don't you work on that? <laughs> Pat Maloney, has the controller's office registered the Aetna contract? If, con if controller refuses, can the mayor still get the cut? Yes, Pat, great question. I met with the controller today. So he does not have the contract. And yet um, there was some explanation of Monday, May 8th, uh, being a day of when new contracts would start to come in for the 23, 24, 24 fiscal year, and that they would start to come in next week. week. He expects it to come in next week. And he would have 30 days to take care of that contract. So no, it is not in his hands yet. And he assured us that he will make sure he scrutinizes it and looks at it in all different ways. And um, and uh, and then he would let us know when he actually does get it and that we appreciated. 
Uh, even if he refuses to register it, the mayor can always do it on his own. I think that would look ugly, but he would still have that ability to do it. You're correct. Um, Barbara, just just click on my face on the Facebook page, or I think in here or something. Click on click on. Um, uh, go to the, or, or here. Barbara, I'm going to put in the chat the, the, uh, the retiree's email. And you're just going to put your message at the email address I just dropped into the chat. Um, is there any way of keeping, is there any way we can keep Medicare by paying for it? I'm going to more doctors than ever. Most doctors told me they can't tell me if they belong till we get a contract number from, uh, no, very nervous. I'm not sure when we're going to get a contract number. You would keep Medicare and you would still have to pay for Medicare. You just remember, if you waive your city benefits, you lose your Medicare B reimbursement. And if you have Irma, you would lose that as well. You That you can pay for, but you would also have to pay for your Medigap plan. Um, so I can't tell you what the contract number is. They're, they're not telling us either. Janice, if we didn't receive our affidavit, then no, Janice, we're still working on them. We have thousands of them in the mailbox. We just haven't gotten a chance to get back to. We asked you to just hold on. We are. We needed you to get them back to us. We are doing them every day. There's a team of us going through them that they need to be corrected, and then we will get them back to you. Um. So don't... Don't we're actually Janice, you're not in New York State, right? So for the out of New York State people, and I'm sorry if that I don't remember, but I just don't. If you're not in New York State, we will acknowledge that we got your affidavit. We will not actually have to email it back to you. We hired a nationwide notary service. We are going to be giving those to them and they will have access to them and then bring them to you. That way you don't have to worry about getting them or printing them out. And I think that was the easiest way to do it. Steve, as long as you emailed it to the drive, Carol, could you do me a favor? I want you to keep a running list of these names. I'm gonna, I'll call them out to you. Tell me when you're ready. Yeah. Because what you'll do is later on is you're going to email me these names, at, you know, today or tomorrow, and then I will look in the drive, me and Michelle, to confirm we got them and at least let them know that we received them. Okay. okay I'm All right. Ready. You're going you're to look at Janice Weiss. Yeah. You're going to look at Steve Fessel, F-E-S-S-E-L. And then it, as soon as we get to your email that we got them, we will at least put receive so you know that we did get them. And and if you're out of state, you're not going to get them back to us. That was decided this afternoon. They will go directly to the notary service and they will bring them to you, okay? So at least you know by the received email, we got them. Um, and then if if I don't see them in there, And I'm going to tell you, I think you need to take a break from social media. <laughs> um, I, I honestly, you're not listening to my messages, my voicemail, my, my video from this morning. I asked you to not make phone calls that council persons told you to make. So I'm, I'm really, I know you're lost, but if you would do me a favor as well and email me your cell phone number, I will call you as well. Because I think you're, I do think you're confused and I'm, I don't want you to be confused. And I think you also need to take a break. I think you're too stressed out and I worry about you. So um, I think social media we weekend, there's no social media for you. We're, we're taking your devices away. <laughs> um, why hasn't anyone challenged the MLC? Well, 
that would be a really great question. You should ask your union why they haven't done that. Um, what happened to Joe Borelli? He bailed out on us. No, he's not supporting us. He bailed out on us, Denise. Sorry. I don't know why. I don't know what the deal was, but he absolutely did. Um, I see a bunch of smiling emojis. Sorry, but but you know what? The last thing we need is you guys to be stressed out. I think everyone needs to give a hug to Anne and anyone who's feeling stressed out like Anne and put your phones and your laptops and your iPads down for Saturday. No one's allowed to touch social media well, except my group. My, my group, you have to still work, but everybody else you need to take off because <laughs> you worked your buns off this week. Chris Marte called me and assured us that our bill is being worked on. I hope you're right. Should we still write to Brad? Yep, still keep doing that, but don't stress her out. Don't stress yourselves out doing it, Camille. Can we do the affidavit? Is there an easier way? Um, Arlene, if you got an email from us and it's you're not able to work on it because you don't have a, a computer or something, please private message us and tell us to send it to you via email so you can work on it. Um, Tommy Grippo, I did not forget you. I know I'm supposed to message you back. Patricia has an affidavit to be, has an affidavit to be written for those retirees who reside in residential homes whose advantage plans are not accepted. So Patricia, if I don't know about them, I can't do that. So if you know of someone that I need to, um, do that for, then you need to let me know. Carol, I will check Messenger after this, after this. I went to my primary doctor today. He said that the doctors in Florida don't accept Aetna or HIP. This, is this correct? Uh, I, Joe, you're going to have to ask each and each one of your doctors if they will accept the Aetna Medicare Advantage PPO plan. You can't just accept one person saying that to you because that's not entirely true. HIP, absolutely no doctor in Florida will accept the Aetna Medicare Advantage plan PPO for the New York City retirees. That could be different. So that is, you do need to make that those calls and ask yourself. Marsha, three days ago, U.S. Senate committee announced that MA plans are haunted by ghost networks. They did a secret shopper study. Yes, I did see that. That was an excellent article. <clears throat> Vera, did you get an email from us? Well, first, you would only get an email for an affidavit if you replied to one of our questionnaires. If you did not, you wouldn't have. So unless you have a very specific situation or you in some way that you would be harmed or uh, some strong details you want to share with us, then yes, absolutely. We, we would need one, you know, we would need one from you. But we put up that affidavit survey for a couple of weeks, if you didn't do it, that's why you didn't get an email from us. Would we lose our drug benefit if we opted out? I'm in New York State. Well, nor it says nor Chichi Weissman Krieger, um, Nori Chichi. So I can't tell you that answer if I don't know what union you're from. You would need to make sure you would not. You would you need to call your your former union and find out. If you're DC 37, the answer is no. If you're UFT, you will have to buy your 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 drug your drug plan. I don't know what union you're in, so I really can't answer that question. John Blau finally figured it out. I am on Facebook for the first time. Julie Menon never replies in my district to several requests to support us. What do I do to and what do I do to ask a question in the chat? Well, John. You just did ask a question in the chat. That's why I'm reading it. And I'm glad to finally see you here. Um, so for everyone that doesn't know, John probably emails me like a couple times a day. <laughs> so John, I'm very grateful that you're on Facebook and to see you for the first time. You did ask your first question here on Facebook. So welcome. Um, and yes, it is not strange to us to know that Julie Menon doesn't answer anybody. You're not alone there. You will find plenty of people here who Julie Menon has pissed off. Um, uh, so sorry to say, but you are in good company, my friend. Um, yep. I would just say, keep doing the emails. You will see on our Facebook page every day, we've been putting up either emails or we are putting up links to click or a call list and that you could share with your group to let them be equally as annoying as us. <laughs> so just tell them, call her office every day. 
Call her district office, call her legislative office and email her every single day. Um, I didn't receive any affidavit out of Brooklyn. Helen, again, if if anyone, and I'm not going to answer more of these because it is, I do want to eventually end this. If you did not get a request for an affidavit from us, it is probably because you did not do the affidavit survey that we put out. And we put out two for a couple of weeks. So I, I don't know what to tell you. If you still want to do one, email the org and we'll send you a we'll send you an affidavit, but it's got to be in by Monday. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad, John, you figured it out. I am proud of you. Actually, we've been teaching a lot of people how to use Facebook or YouTube or Zoom or I'm glad you're here. I got help for the affidavit from the library. Could Marion or the moderators reach out to Frank Siller of Tunnel to Towers? Paula, I'm going to ask you to reach out to him. I do not have time to do that while I'm doing affidavits. If there is something Frank can do for us, then I need to know that specifically. Otherwise, I can't stop what I'm doing. Michael Eidington, please explain the issue with pre-existing conditions if we waive New York City benefits. So, Michael, depending upon what state you are in, there's only four states in the United States of America that have guarantee issue rights. And that's Maine, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New York. That means that you are guaranteed to be issued a health insurance plan without underwriting or regardless of you know your age or, or open enrollment period, whatever. If you are not in one of those states, you do not have a guaranteed issue right. Then of course, and that is federally, that's federal rule. Then every state makes its own rules, which complicates matters even more. Now, if you're under 65 and on disability, you don't have a guarantee issue right unless the state decides to give you one. And I can't tell you that because most states don't guarantee issues to under 65 year olds. If you are over 65, you, you will be able to get a, a Medigap policy, but most likely you would be, um, you would be subject to underwriting and there is where in lies the issue. Um, and as well, that could happen if you're under 65. So now you're subject to underwriting. What does that mean? They were going to look at your age, your health, where you live, all of those factors and determine if they will sell you a policy and if they do, for how much? Um, Julie Menon, her community liaison is a young man named Harry Gale, G-A-L-E. Thank you. In case anyone is interested. So Bruce says, how often does a controller get bombarded by objections to a contract must have some impact? It actually, um, well, I will just tell you today that uh, that our one of our lobbyists was in the room today talking to the controller, you know, expanding upon how we've been working very tirelessly and very persuasively to try to get our point across to the controller. And it was not lost on them. What they were saying is that we were being somewhat annoying. And I had to stop the meeting and said, um, you might just, it's okay if you say that I'm a pain in the ass. I will wear that badge with honor. I don't mind. And so the controller said that he knows why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's because of all of you. So he, it's not lost on him why it's happening that all of you are calling. But I do think they admire our organizing strategies Um so we've had an impact that we've tied up many of their emails and telephones and and this is life today. Um, you know, it is what it is. I, I wear the PETA badge. I was actually looking for a PETA, a PETA patch. <laughs> what can I tell you? Um, Michelle, I'm, I'm sorry, Carol, put down William Shenton. I need to see if we got his affidavit as well. Oh, okay. William Shenton. Yeah. Hi, Bill. Jan, in, in, next to Janice's name, please put she lives in Brooklyn. Okay. So I know to look in the right folder. Also, Carol Scagnelli. She's North Carolina. Okay. You're welcome, Pat. You can definitely tell we're breaking our butts. I'm exhausted. Um, you're welcome, Dita. <laughs> Check also Dita Hirschkoff. I want to make sure we got hers as well. D-E-T-A Hirschkoff, H-E-R-S-H-K-O-F-F. -F. 
I can't hear a word you're saying. What did I do? Sherry, turn up the volume on your device. I've been taking care of my dad, but squeezed in many calls to city council. Some got interesting responses. I missed the opportunity to add the New York City retiree Facebook. I wait for Monday to add my feedbacks. Don't worry about it. If you want to actually send that to an email, you can send us your response in an email to the organization. You don't have to wait till Monday. Uh, Karen, I think I'm almost positive I got yours because I think I worked on yours. <laughs> Ar uh, put down Ar Arlene, R A R L I N E Cutler. Katie, if you didn't get an affidavit request, you may not have done the uh, completed the affidavit survey. <clears throat> it was up online for a couple weeks. Denise Gaudio, it says I'm in ops and didn't sign the affidavit. Denise, can you put down Denise Gaudio? Can you please email us? I don't understand what that means or put a message in the chat. I don't understand what that means. I didn't sign the affidavit. Did you complete one? Or did you do the affidavit survey? I, I, don't, I don't understand. Ellen Markham Steiner, I need you to do an affidavit that you still not did not receive anything. And if you don't have an affidavit, I need you to get one. So you need to, to message the org and ask for an affidavit. Anyone who did not get a booklet, we need to have something from you. Lainey, I'm going to assume that person was Alexa. Did she, is she the one that said to you that she would send it back? Laureen Orsery, we do not talk when we're doing all of that here. What I'm just going to tell you is we are still, you hear me still talking about getting affidavits ready for the court case, right? So it's, it's proving to you we're working on it. I can't give you more details than that. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to put you in the corner if you don't change your attitude. <laughs> And you're going to step off social media after this Zoom and not pick it up again till Sunday. And if you don't promise me that, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> I'm going to send someone to your house to confiscate your social media devices. <laughs> Catherine, if you did not complete an affidavit survey on our Facebook page, and if you're new here and you only got here just recently and you didn't do it a few weeks ago, that's why you're, this is new to you. It's an affidavit for the litigation. Michelle is not here because she's going camping. Eileen Monshine, please private message me with a message. Please email me your, to say, email me an affidavit that you can work on. I will tell you how to do it, but you have to, you have to send me your email address so I can email it to you.
George, I can't tell you if unfortunately they will accept if what happens if you are pre if you are pre existing with cancer is Aetna going to accept you on their plan? Aetna has to accept you on their plan. Just they will probably whatever your situation is will fall under with their pre pre authorization requirements. That will you know that will be up to the plan. That's one of the reasons why we're fighting this. Thank you, Steve. You too. Public advocate Jumani Williams did introduce a bill. Unfortunately, he did it with, the, with that CROC group and did not pull us into that messaging, and neither did the CROC group. Unfortunately, that bill also got preempted, and no one wants to move that bill either. This is what happens when you're an organization or a person and you're not working together with the organization leading the charge. So we spoke with their office. They can't help us with this. It's already been done, and they're not able to put the people behind it that needed to have been behind it. So we unfortunately, we we we, we told Croc how we felt about what they did, and we we reached out to Jamani Williams' office and at, wished that they had reached out to us. Unfortunately, they told us they were not told about us. Um, we then had to pick this up on our own. So that's why we started, and our bills were done about the same time. But that's why it's important to not try to fly on things solo and pull in people to help you with doing them. Croc is not an organization. They're just a small social group. Um, Sophia, I don't know what you're asking me about DC 37, about DC 230, DC 37. I'm not quite sure what you're asking me. Private message us. Either send an email to the organization, Arlene, that might just be easier. <clears throat> William, I don't know if I'm going to have a chance to do that. We are so overwhelmed with what we the work that we have to get done in the next 48 hours. I, I honestly don't know if I could add more to that. If they don't know that why they got an affidavit, they're the ones that completed the affidavit survey. And it was pretty, the email that they got would have been pretty self-explanatory and telling them what to do and how to do it and offering them multiple choices. And we sent out multiple emails about it and offered multiple opportunities to attend a, a seminar that me and Michelle and Sue Ellen were holding twice a day, every day this week. So I, I, I don't know what to say to that. They, literally, we held two, one on Monday, two on Tuesday, two on Wednesday, two on Thursday. I, I don't I don't know what to say about that. I honestly, I, I have no more hours in my day to, to expand, you know, in, in individual situations. This has got to be moving as a group, a group project. People need to pull up that due diligence. I mean, we're putting it out there and then helping people in those meetings that we pull in. They've got to show up with the group. We can't keep sidetracking, taking an hour time out to just help one single person specific issue in mitigating how to do this. They've got to join the group, the group page. If they're in our Facebook page, have them show, ask the questions, the moderators will help, or just reply to the email and say, hey, I'm having a struggle with this. Can I, can you help me kind of, you know, go through it? And then we can try to, you know, do that there. But this is, we're getting down to the wire now, and there's a lot of work that needs to get done. <laughs> this reason, this group is the only reason my dad's on Facebook. <laughs> By June 30th, we do not have either an injunction or a resolution in the case. What do we do about waiving? No. So, John, I've been telling you, we will be, we can't just not tell you anything. This organization, like the last time, has to make a decision by June 15th on what to do. So we know that we give you two weeks to do something to make imp, implement whatever your plan B is. You will keep hearing from us nearing that June 15th date. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of shit happening between now and June 15th. So please just hang in there. It's important just to stay patient. That's why we asked you to do your, your worst case scenario. What's your plan B? Make sure you made those calls. You and I have been emailing this back and forth. So stick to what we've been saying. 
I sent out my affidavit yesterday. It wasn't notarized and badly needed revisions. I revised it today, had it notarized and sent it in. Please ignore the unnotarized affidavit. Um, Carol, please make a note to that Denise Rickles sent in two affidavits, one notarized, one not, and to delete the one that was not. My union is UFT, so is understanding I will need to buy my own. Yes, Nori, you're absolutely correct. Because you are UFT, you would have to purchase the drug plan. Also, um, Michael Mulgrew, uh, and I think it was Joe Usatch or Jeff Sorkin said that because you would be waiving your health benefits in the UFT, you would still be entitled to your refund from the UFT welfare fund. I was like 840 to something dollars a year, but you would have to now apply for it annually. So keep that in the back of your mind. Last week, you mentioned I am on your list. I have to fill out an affidavit with that Mount Sinai does not take this. Please email me. Deborah, you should have received an email from the organization with the affidavit. If you did not, please email the organization. Bonnie, we did change the survey answers when we were requested to. If you still feel you have something to add and want to do an affidavit, email the organization. Arlene Cutler, the same thing. If you still still feel you need and want to do an affidavit, please email the organization. Thank you, Tommy. Janet Buck, I'm not quite sure if there's a question in there, but, but. Um, and, and senior care is not technically a Medigap plan, although yes, it does act like one. Um, Leslie, I'm really sorry to tell you that Floridians do not have guaranteed issue rights, and I'm sorry that people keep telling you that. That is up to a state interpretation of a federal statute. If they want to, like, squint one eye and tell you that you do have a guaranteed issue right, well, then that's up to them. We're telling you that for a fact there is no guarantee issue right in the state of Florida in the, under the strictest of interpretation of the federal statute. If under the state law, um, if an insurer decides that they want to interpret it with a wink that they will ensure you will then fine, then that's good. You're good. That means that they're willing to interpret that interpretation loosely. <laughs> Yes, Janice, UFT retains the welfare fund if you choose to leave. Just remember, you have to still buy your own drug plan. So... Fran, the reason why they're telling you that is because the way you're describing it is that your health care is, you know, they're taking away your ending your senior care. Even though your Medicare, uh, Medigap or supplemental plan is ending, your health insurance is not. It would You would have a guarantee issue, right, if let's say your employer went bankrupt or decided to cease their, their health care plan altogether. That's not happening to you. Right now, they're ending your supplemental plan. They're putting you in a plan that you don't like. That doesn't ne necessitate a guarantee issue. If the insurer in that state wishes to interpret it loosely, then that's fine. But I'm telling you for a fact, they don't have to interpret it that way. 
That's all I'm saying to you. Can you please put on that list to check for an affidavit? Ellen Sue Karen, K-A-R-A-N. No, Lainey, there's nothing to do yet. Um, also Mindy Caruso, Robert Caruso. Also Diane Strano de Monte, D-E-M-O-N-T-E. Ruth Newman, N-E-U-M-A-N. Now I understand what she's saying. Um, you are being asked as a plaintiff of this organization to sign a document that says that you would be willing to be a plaintiff in our organization. You just need to sign on as a plaintiff, recognizing that we are taking care of your expenses, not you. Um, so that's super important that you understand the difference. You are signing on to be a plaintiff. We are taking care of your bill. Um, and that's a, that's a very big point to make. Can you add Sharon Johnson to the list? Yeah. Denise, you do not have to worry about an out-of-state affidavit. We being notarized. You, what's going to happen is we are going to tweak it. We will then send it. When it's completed, it will be given to the notary who will then be contacting you for an appointment. And the reason it has to be done that way is because you live out of state, out of New York state. And out of state affidavits, in order to be entered into this court case, they have to have what they call an affirmation. And so it has to be assigned by, an, by a notary, and then it has to be signed by an attorney that the notary follow the laws of that state. We have to pay for those. I mean, if you want to do that, you're welcome to pay for that. But I need to be able to do this consistently. So what we did was we hired a nationwide company to be able to do that for you. So once we have it, you will be, you should be receiving an email that says that it has been received. We will be correcting it, formatting it, whatever. We can send it back to you to proof if it needs, if, if we've changed something that we feel that needs your eyes on it again. Otherwise, if it's just formatting, it goes directly to the notary who then will be calling you probably in the next week or two to start setting up an appointment to get it notarized for you. And you have nothing left to do. And we pay for that too. Um, put on Janice Grabowski, G R A B O W S K I. Arlene, the email address for the organization is retirees with an S at NYC retirees.org. Leslie, if OLR asked you for your Medicare number, you were probably going to have to give it to them because that's what they're using to, to waive your, to, to auto enroll you into the Aetna plan. And when we did have to sign up for our health benefits, we had to give them a copy of our card. They just don't have a copy of your updated card because your number changed. Look up, uh, I sent affidavit, was waiting to hear back. 
uh, Wayne, if you sent us the the, the the document and we didn't send it back to you, I, could you put on Wayne Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T? Again, anyone who's asking a question about your affidavit, if we still have it, it's because we have thousands. So you have to give us an opportunity to go through them, correct them, and then and let and send them back to you. If you are out of state, they won't be coming back to you. If you are in New York State, we will send it back to you to get notarized. And Sheldon, that is the way most people do this. You absolutely can have your spouse's be on your spouse's insurance as primary and your if you choose to be with Aetna Medicare Advantage that would be your secondary simply because your spouse is still working and that's actually and if you're on their insurance that's the way that's supposed to work Um, and Michelle, to that point, those documents are supposed to be confidential <laughs> because that's between you and the client, you and the attorney, and that's supposed to be privileged. Um, Vera, I can't answer that there's told me on the phone there's no glasses unless cataract, no dental, no ship. Is that true? I am not familiar with this plan offering any of that. They did have, I think, an, a, an, an eye exam and a hearing exam, but no dental. And I don't know what ship means. Ship is a UFT. But why would that be offered by Aetna? No, you wouldn't have to testify in court. Your affidavit's enough. Sherry, when you get a phone call, you will hear from someone. <laughs> I'm going to say probably in the next two weeks. Well, and if you didn't become a teacher and you became a lawyer, think about all those kids, those kids lives you wouldn't have touched. You did a good thing. You just should have been a union president. <laughs> then, then you would have really made a difference. Um, Diane, you're saying to me, you can't get in touch with OLR. Then email them at healthbenefits at olr.nyc.gov. olr.nyc.gov. Marilyn Giordano de Giacomo, I have no idea what you're asking me, what you have to do. If you haven't been sent an affidavit, you don't have to do anything. Nimi Alperstein, if that's the only thing that you have doctors that haven't heard about this plan, sure. If I would say yes, if you want to do one, sure. If you already have an affidavit, but I, if you don't have anything more to add, then I'm going to say no. Yes, Myron, I'm still telling you not to do nothing yet. All you had to do was your homework to prepare in the worst case scenario what your plan B would be. You had to make those phone calls to find out what you would have to do if you chose to waive your health benefits and keep a Medigap plan for what that would cost you on the outside. You had to make those phone calls. Yeah. Wayne, don't worry. I will look probably tomorrow when I'm awake and caffeinated. 
Okay, so um, does transit have a different plan than the rest of us? Yes, most transit, if they're not in this, their state, they get their MTA benefits through the state, not here. So it is nine o'clock, it's an hour. I only really wanted to do 30 minutes, but we stayed on the full hour because you guys had a million and one questions. Um, but uh, I'm going to say um, good night to you guys, Janice. No, I already said you don't have to testify in court. It's just the affidavit that we need. That's the last question. I'm not answering anymore. Hold them. Hold them. <laughs> um, anyway, have and a great day. Please, please send in what you can for contributions because expenses are getting higher as we're moving down this track. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Lainey, we have said several times what you needed to do to, to look for a Medigap. You need to call your state SHIP office. You can call Medicare. You can start looking on the Medicare.gov website. There is plenty of ideas, suggestions, search by zip code, things that you can do. You need to know what it would look like if you were to waive your health benefits and what it would cost you. And you also have to ask, inquire what that process would look like. Um, and I lied and I took another question. So <laughs> thank you to everyone. Thank you to the moderators. Thank you to Joe for doing our website. Thank you for all of you for um, hanging in there. Uh, and um, and hanging with us. If you did not do your affidavit, please complete it and get it into us by Monday, um, preferably over the weekend if you can, because we really got to try to get these done and and get them get them back to you in New York so you can get them notarized and get them to the notary who can start making the appointments in the other states. Um, if you if I directed you to email the organization at retirees at NYC at retirees at N, at retirees at nycretirees.org. Please email us specifically what you need. If you need us to email you the affidavit, we will send it to you. Um, and let us know too, if you have an Apple device or, or a, um, a Windows device um, and or if you're using a cell phone because that makes a whole lot different. If you think you're going to struggle with it because you only have a, a small cell phone or an iPad to do it on, ask us to just email you email it to you in an email. Don't email you a file that you would have to open. That way then we could just forward it to you. That way the easiest way to do that is when you get the email affidavit from us that the affidavit is in the body of the email, you would just click reply all. And then that way you can go in and change all of the highlighted yellow parts of the email, put in all your information and email it right back to us. We will take it, copy it and put it in an actual affidavit form for you. So that's the easiest way to explain that. Um, I'm just going to ask you to have a great weekend. Anne Elterman, put your cell phone down tonight, girl. <laughs> and we'll see you. Uh, you're allowed to pick it back up on Sunday. And then we're going to close the page tonight, and we'll see all of you on Monday. Have a great night, everyone. Love yous. Bye. <laughs> Ciao.